So what does it mean for something to be stable? Something is stable if, whenever you move it away from its equilibrium, a force brings it back. So this book sitting on the table is stable, because if I try and perturb it by, say, pushing the side up, there's an upward normal force there that brings it back, and no matter what I try to do to it, the force brings it back. If, on the other hand, I take a pen and balance it, I can balance it so the forces are in balance, it's in equilibrium, but if it tilts even slightly one way or the other, the forces become more and more out of balance, so it tips even if more. So, of course, it falls over. So is, is a white dwarf stable? Well, consider this as a model of a white dwarf. A white dwarf is a ball of gas, this is a sphere of gas. Let's imagine that the surface of the balloon is like a surface layer on the white dwarf. If we push it in, it bounces back out again. What's happening is, as we push it in, the volume inside the ball of gas decreases. As volume gets smaller, pressure gets more, and so that pushes back out. Likewise, if I pull one side out, it springs back in again. So, a balloon is stable, unless you puncture it. For a white dwarf, it's a bit different. For a white dwarf star, the same thing applies. You've got, let's say, a surface level of the white dwarf, and if it's pushed inwards, then the volume of the gas further in it shrinks, so it must push back. But on the other hand, you also have gravity in a white dwarf. If the surface layer gets closer to the middle, gravity becomes stronger because of the inverse square law. So that will pull things further in. So is it stable or not? That will depend upon the balance between the pressure force and the gravitational force and how they change as you squash some part of it. So you've got a simple model of a star, which is that it's a sphere of uniform gas with a shell on the outskirts with radius r, let's say. And the question is, is the shell going to be stable? Now this is a gross oversimplification because, of course, the density will steadily increase towards the middle, so calling everything in the middle just uniform is a bit silly. And you've also got gas on the outside, which we'll ignore for the moment, though it turns out it works perfectly well if you put that in as well. But let's take the shell and push it in by a little tiny bit. How as it's moved in, there's going to be less volume inside. As the volume goes down, the pressure will go up, and so the pressure will push back out with some change in the pressure. On the other hand, when you move closer in, gravity is going to be stronger because you're closer to the centre of the whole mass system. So the question is, how do those two effects differ? Now, one thing we're going to have to figure out is how pressure changes as volume changes. If you've got an ideal gas, then it's just PV equals a constant, nKT, typically. So as pressure goes up, the uh, volume goes down, or vice versa. However, that's not always generally true. It may be true for an ideal gas that's kept at the same temperature, but if the temperature changes when you compress it, then all bets are off, because this constant isn't so constant anymore. So in general, what people tend to use is PV to some power gamma equals a constant. And if gamma equals 1, that's the ideal gas. But in other situations, for example, where the temperature is not uh, fixed, then gamma may not be 1. OK, so if you've got that, how does the pressure force vary as you move something in? Well, the volume inside is going to be proportional to R cubed. The pressure is therefore going to be proportional to 1 over V to the gamma, which is and V proportional to R cubed, so it's 1 over R to the 3 gamma. So that tells us the pressure inside. The force is pressure times area, the area of the inside of the shell. So the area is just the area of a sphere, which is 4 pi R squared. So pressure force is going to be pressure times area. That's the definition of pressure. It's a force per unit area. So it's going to be this times that. R squared. I'm going to write that instead of 1 over R to 3 gamma, I'm going to write just R to the minus 3 gamma, which is the same thing. So it's going to be proportional to 
r to the 2 minus 3 gamma. OK, so that's telling us how the pressure force will vary as we move our shell of star inwards. How about the gravitational force? Well, the gravitational force is just my Newton's law, g m of everything inside, m of the shell over r squared. So it's just proportional to r to the minus 2. So what we can see is we have a pressure force that goes as r to this power and a gravity force that goes as r to that power. So if these two powers are identical, then if you push something in, sure, the pressure will go up, but the gravity will go up just as much, so it will stay in balance, so it can keep moving in or keep moving out. If, on the other hand, this increases faster than that, when you push something in, the pressure will increase by more than the gravitational force, so that will push the thing back at it, it will be stable. If, on the other hand, this varies more than that, then it's going to be unstable. If you push it in, the gravity will increase by more than the pressure, so it will move in, accelerating faster and faster. So for stability, the edge of stability is going to be where this index equals that index. So minus 2 equals 2 minus 3 gamma. So let's rearrange that. So we'll move this over this side. So we get 3 gamma equals 4. So gamma equals 4 thirds. And that is the criteria for stability. If gamma is greater than 4 thirds, then the star is stable because the pressure will increase faster than the gravity when you push some shell inwards. If, on the other hand, gamma is less than or equal to 4 thirds, it's unstable. If it were exactly equal, when you push it in, it will just keep on moving in at the same speed, which is pretty disastrous. If it's less than that, it will accelerate inwards. So it's even more unstable. So that is the criteria for whether a star is stable or not, whether if you perturb some layer of the star, it zooms all the way in and collapses, or whether it bounces back and stays where it should be.